people to join us so that we can have a collective voice in this process. So I'm asking you to support myself and also Alex Mendoza, the vice presidential candidate for the Socialist Party USA. Alex Mendoza, he has been very diligent about working and building the campaign in Texas and in the southern states. Actually, Alex Mendoza was a student here at this campus in the 90s. He's one of you. <laughs> Alex Mendoza is also, he's, he's a young person, he's 35 years old. He is a strong supporter of the Socialist Party. In addition to that, he had mentioned one of his coaches, John Carlos. He was one of the coaches here on this campus. And he also uh, worked with John Carlos when he was here. He was one of the individuals that raised his fist during the Olympics in 1968. So you have people that you can relate to right here on your campus that's supporting what we're uh, doing and also what our goal is to do for working class people. But today I want to also thank uh, Dylan and I want to thank all the persons that gave us the opportunity where we could come here today and be able to present our message. Thank you. Thank you, Dylan. I want to mention also, I saw the sign on Facebook, we want Stu, and I really got excited. I was trying to figure out how can I get this sign like all over cyberspace. <laughs> but. I want to thank everyone that contributed to making that possible. It's a beautiful sign, and thank you for the support that you've given the organization. Again, I want to thank our technician, Brian Newberry. I want to thank Steve Clark for being here. Steve, could you stand up just for a second? Steve Clark for being here. He, he's one of your residents. He lived just right around the corner from the school. All persons that are interested in the party and supporting the party, you can contact uh, uh, Steve Clark. Right now, I'll turn this over to Dylan so he can take any questions. All right, so uh, anyone that has a question, just go ahead and come up here to this mic and uh, go ahead and start lining up. Hi. Uh, we recently just did an essay on this, and I was wondering about um, your view on it. Uh, do you think interest groups are essential to the lawmaking process in a democratic system? Uh, well, we have spoken against that, and also we have seen, even just recently, within the last decade, Arnold Schwarzenegger, when he was elected into uh, public office in 2003, and uh, shortly after that I ran for lieutenant governor in 2006, but he was, he was speaking against uh, special interest groups, private interest groups. Usually what we find with these uh, special interest groups is they also are represented by hundreds of millions and billions of dollars. And subsequently, instead of the needs of working people being addressed, these individuals representing private interests, they are only there to make certain that the people that are have an interest, a financial interest, in our economies, in our government, that the interests of the few are met. So we are very opposed to special interest groups uh, having that type of influence in uh, government, whether it's on the state or the national level. Uh, what's your views on marijuana? <laughs> Well, I've never smoked in my life, <laughs> and I've never smoked marijuana, and sometimes I think if I smoke, <laughs> I, I can't comprehend how someone can smoke a cigarette and digest the smoke without choking on it, and, and par partially, and I'm going to get to your question, partially because the way I was relate, uh, raised religiously, we... No one, no one in my family, even as of today, smoke. Uh, most of it, I drink wine, and that's about it. But in regards to marijuana, I believe that marijuana should be legalized. Um, it should be legalized because the only reason why it's not legal, the only reason why it is not legal because it 
hinders the profits of big corporations. And it was the most popular drug, if you look at before the 30s, it was the most popular uh, uh, drug that was actually on the market. I believe it should be, first of all, legalized, and also I believe it should be decriminalized. Because part of the reason why it needs to be decriminalized, when I ran for lieutenant governor in 2006, we had 172,000 inmates in California prisons. And many of those were in prison because of marijuana infractions, where they had violated their parole because of marijuana. But we have seen with the three strikes and also with marijuana, it has created a revolving doors, revolving doors for the prison industrial complex. So I am very supportive of having it legalized and also where we can be able to create that as a means of income for working people. Hi, um, I just want to ask you, uh, what's the difference between socialism and communism? That's a good question. Uh, for, I, I've heard the Socialist Party. Uh, <laughs> first of all, I'll mention I'm not a communist. Uh, I've been approached many times by communists to join the party. and uh, Communism is more authoritarian. Uh, the uh, communist governments that we see, if you look at the roots and the foundation of communism, uh, it is supposedly for working class people. But what we have seen also, we have seen uh, in communism where it has centralized government. And we as socialists, we don't believe that that's necessary for working uh, to be able to promote the needs of working class people. As socialists, uh, uh, speaking about socialism, we believe that we need to have controls of our communities on the local level, the state, and also on the national level, and it should, be not, should not be centralized. And we see also in China, we see in Russia, and many other countries where they have had communism, that that's the type of, uh, type of leadership that they have and the types of government that they have. Now, I might mention that there are many types of communism, and there are many types of uh, socialism. Uh, there's one party which is, uh, I should say several parties right here in California, which are also socialists, and they differ still from the Socialist Party or the, and the Peace and Freedom Party. I won't mention them by name because I have many friends that are members of those parties. But subsequently, we believe that we need to have, to have a fair democratic process in government. It needs to be socialism as opposed to communism. Uh, let me just mention one other thing. That's another good question when you, when you mention about socialism. A lot of many times people don't understand how we are exposed to socialism every day, even in the U.S. The U.S. is probably one of the best examples of socialism on the whole planet. When when you go and pay your DMV fee so you can use the public highways, that, that's socialism, by the way. It's, they're not private highways; they're they're public highways. The public school system, because it, most of the schools are not pr uh, private schools; they're public schools. When you go to the post office, when you use your social security, that's also socialism. Medicare, Medicaid, all, all that socialism. Many of the things that we are exposed to on a daily basis, the police department, it's not a private police department. When you look at the fire department, all of these are, all of these are things that we see on a regular basis that is part of socialism. So when people ask me about socialism and where do we see it working today, I see the best example is right here in the U.S. And we really saw that with many of the public works projects in the 30s that they had, that they introduced, it came on the backs of socialism so that it could shore up capitalism. So cap socialism does work, and we have seen that, for the most part, that... Uh, we have seen the struggles of communism worldwide. You, you mentioned searching the world for cheap labor, but this Pardon is... Pardon me? Um, you mentioned uh, searching the world for cheap labor. This is only because business regulations are so strict. 
but socialism would destroy big business and capitalism, and how would this fix our economy? You mentioned $15 trillion debt. Well, one, one of the things I, I find very interesting, uh, years ago my, my wife, she loved Walmart, and I don't. <laughs> I don't go into Walmart. But my wife, she said, I will always go into, I will always shop at Walmart. Well, one of the things we saw, we, we could see with uh, Walmart years ago, it was Walmart, they took pride in U.S. made, made in the USA. But what we could see from that, giving that the lar world's largest retailer, they were searching the globe where they could find cheap labor. And if they couldn't find it in the U.S., they found it in Mexico, Indonesia. One of the greatest uh, markets right now for Walmart is right there in China, again, for cheap labor. But we believe, and what I support, just recently we have Sears, and just very quickly on Walmart, we don't believe that we should be able to buy goods and services based on the cheap labor from other countries. We need to create jobs right here in the U.S. because we need those jobs right here, right now. Those will be your future jobs. Just recently we saw that we, we could see that Sears had indicated that they were going to be closing, I believe it was 109 nine of their stores nationwide. I believe when you refer to big corporations, instead of us closing those stores, we should have had the people that were working there where they could go back and have those businesses where they were owned, owned by the people that worked there, managed, and also employees of those same companies. So we believe that we need to preserve, instead of closing down factories, closing down stores, we believe that this, these are opportunities for working people where we can build our society and create jobs for the future generations instead of exploiting them to other countries. Yes, hello. Um, what's the difference between the socialism you believe in here in America as opposed to the socialism in France? Well, uh, the socialism, uh, it, it, the socialism I believe in here with the Socialist Party USA is that we believe that it should be better, more representation as far as for working people. We don't have that in France either. Basically, we have very strong similarities of what you have here in the U.S. Now, they have many areas that are very socialized, uh, such as medicine, uh, I should say health care, uh, making certain that people that are unemployed. So they have very similarities to what we have here. But when we look at France, m many people, they identify with France as being a socialist nation, partially because they consider it very liberal. And people, when they look at myself as a socialist, they consider me liberal. But I, I'm not necessarily liberal, but I do believe in fairness. Right now, the, the socialism that you would say in France, they are making headway for working people, but they have a long ways to go. I believe, as far as socialists, we need to make certain that we put working people, first of all, in representation in Washington, D.C., in state government, in our local governments, and make certain on all levels, whether, whether it's here in the U.S. or France, that the needs of the people from the bottom up the, that those people are being heard, and right now that is not happening in the U.S. or France. What are your plans on uh, lowering unemployment, and how will the cutting back on the cost of teachings and health care affect it? That's a very good question as far as uh, uh, lowering unemployment. If you remember, President Obama, he had a $800 billion stimulus package that he said he was going to have shovel-ready jobs. And then he came back later and he said, well, they weren't quite shovel-ready. Well, the money was lost. And then we, we have seen since then that billions of dollars 
and trillions of dollars has been reinvested right back into the big corporations on Wall Street. I believe, and what is imperative that we do, is that we create real jobs. I support mass transportation, and I believe that we need to invest in light rail, that we need to, I have always been a supporter of electric cars and hydrogen vehicles. The technology is there today. And we need to build those factories right in our communities and not find other countries and other businesses in other countries to build here, but we need to build those factories and create jobs right here, right now. In addition to that, you mentioned the infrastructure. There's trillions of dollars, when you, you consider what the needs are in this country, there's trillions of dollars that need to be spent on repairing the infrastructure, the highways, the bridges, our dams, our water projects. Trillions of dollars need to be spent. And these are future jobs that we need to start investing in instead of for private corporations to make certain that those funds are invested right here to create real good paying jobs for working people. All right, guys, uh, that's all. Thank you for coming. And if you want to stay for a little bit, you can speak to Mr. Alexander personally. And I want to thank everyone for coming and giving us support and also giving us an audience good today. For you, so thank you very you much. Uh, I want to thank Lewis for setting us up. Vote Alexander. <laughs>